It's time that utility tokens hit back. Yeah, and they're hitting hard right now. Yes, all those guys out there talking about the pump and dumps, the meme coins, the speculation crap is just not going anywhere. It looks like it's the utility coins taking off and we're going over that today on OG Crypto and NFTs. Welcome everybody. My name is Troy and every day, Monday through Friday, we go over the latest news in blockchain, non-fungible tokens, NFTs, as well as cryptocurrencies. And yes, do me a favor. It would help me so much if you were to subscribe, hit that subscribe button and then put on your notifications. We want to notificate, we want to get you notifications of the of real news on a Monday through Friday basis. All right, let's jump into that big, big jump today in the price of XDC. Why? Banking powerhouse SBI commits to empowering XDC, expanding XDC networks footprint in Japan. Wow, this came out of nowhere. Let's go read what this says. I mean, XDC has been sitting around. It's been one of those coins that haven't really done anything. Why? Because the influencers don't get paid to pump it. The influencers don't, they're looking for clickbait. This isn't a coin for clickbait. And because of that, that's why it is a gem. This is not financial advice. It is a cheap, cheap undervalued gem but this coin will be used for trade finance and tokenization i know it's already being tokenized gold is being tokenized on its network it is very very secure and it is now becoming more and more prominent in that trade finance we know that england has now passed a bill for trade finance called mika one of the the, the propositions in there and because of that we're seeing the xdc kind of starting to move up and getting some notoriety but let's go read what it says here it says xdc network presented by trade fenex uh tech ltd which that's the real name of of xdc trade uh, fintech uh not fintech uh yeah fintech uh, Xfen, uh, Fen, Zenfen. Wow, <laughs> can't get it down. Zenfen. Okay, is pleased to announce its partnership with SBI VC Trading, a prominent Japanese cryptocurrency exchange within the SBI, C, SBI group. The strategic collaboration marks a significant milestone for XDC Network as it expands its ecosystem in the Japanese market. Now they have a few different. Uh, they, they also, in this with SBC, they would, R3 is another company that does worldwide payments and trade, trade as well as several other different companies. And XDC is in the middle of it. It completely makes sense that XDC, which I feel will be trade finance, the trade finance coin. Now, why do we need trade finance? Some people ask me, well, let's just go over it really quickly. Number one, the, the system that we're using now is it can be very corrupted and is not reliable why because a lot of the the invoices or information uh and uh banking banking information the invoicing information the back end information the confirmation that that everything's been been moved and traded and sent and invoiced out uh is just not it's not done by anything but hand right now and so with that transfer you just don't know if if people have duplicate invoices if there is you know if if what they received and what they got were two different things or what they received and what they were sent or what they paid for are two different things this guarantees and locks it in on real time basis not on days and months and because of that the adoption of xdc is going to be out there now, some of you XRP people have said that, yeah, we're in that space as well, but yes, but you're not specifically in that space. And because of it with Ripple, they're looking at CBDCs and cross-border payments, but they're not going over cross-border transfers of, of invoices or of information on the trade, on trade all over the world. This is anywhere from 15 to $30 trillion industry. We're gonna see it disrupted right here by XTC. Big step here. All right, next. Tri Triangulo partners with Al Asari. Again, Triangulo is, uh, is, is majority owned by Ripple Labs. And again, we're looking at different regions and different markets being opened up by all these Ripple partners and they will use on-demand liquidity and they actually said it. So with that being said, we're just seeing Ripple continue to grow their network. 
and it's the first mover. And I can't repeat this. I can't say it over and over and over and make sense to some people out there, but the first one to the party is the first one that's going to talk to the banks is the first one that has a solution for them. And the first one that actually has real world differences. I can go and talk about 10 other coins that all taught, have a good story, but do not have the network up. Can't prove that their network is actually going to do what they say. This is first mover advantage. And we, and we end if there's clarity on the road, right on the road with XRP and the SEC net, uh, SEC lawsuit and they settle, get out of the way uh, world because Ripple is going to tear it up and it's going to dis it is going to be the most disruptive company in the in the last 20 years over Amazon, Google and Apple. All right, next, Japan's largest airline launches NFT marketplace. Very interesting here. We, you know, I'm gonna I, the platform. All Nippon Airways ongoing expansion, the inter intersections of airlines and Web3. What, what this is happening is that why not have an NFT place where you can buy and trade tickets? So it, it, this, is, this is, imagine when people go out and they say, okay, I wanna go to the Super Bowl. I wanna go to a sporting event. Well, you have the initial ticket sale, right? And then you have a secondary companies out there, which then trade these tickets for money or cash or value going back and forth. Imagine you doing that for airplane tickets, okay? But, but since they're NFTs, it's real time. So, the, so if I were to go send whatever the people wanted, whatever, whatever value, whatever fiat, if it's fiat or if it's cryptocurrencies, for an airline ticket, I can do it instantly. I don't have to wait for them to mail it to me or like StubHub, you know, or or those things. It's instant, it's instant payment, instant. I get it as an NFT, so it shows authentic authentication as well. Makes sense. I think that we're we're all going to this. It's not a question. It's just we're seeing some of the some of the companies out of this country because the US is is definitely been held back. All right. Let's go on to the next thing. Uh, uh, Balik, Balik, Balicher announces acceptance of XRP crypto payments for real estate purchases in Bali. Kind of crazy, guys. We're now seeing more and more adoption of what is happening out there is that cryptocurrency is being accepted for everything. Real estate transactions, airline, pur airline purchases. We're seeing it for just so many use cases. We will all, everything is going to be either tokenized or have NFTs and we're not going to be, you know, fiat will always be used to a certain degree, but we're going to see cryptocurrencies, whether it be a CBDC or a stable coin or XRP in this case, or Ethereum or, or whoever, we're going to see it being used on everyday life. All right, let's jump in the next one and let's bring in our producer, Emmy. How you doing, Emmy? I am good. How are you? I don't know. Are you a Peppy fan? No. Come on. Come on. You're not a meme coin fan. The meme coin craze has really have so much negativity in it right now. I mean, I mean, just people have been in the space like me and you. We just don't want to FOMO into it. It usually is something that is, you know, it reels in the general public who then has their first experience in crypto being their worst experience in crypto, right? And then you throw in that, you know, when you're when you're buying and selling meme coins over ERC20, which is Ethereum virtual network, the charges for the gas fees are so horrendous, yet people are so blinded by becoming millionaires, you know, in a one shot, you know, oh, I want to be a millionaire. My I think a lot of people in uh, my generation, the millennial generation, almost use crypto as like a smarter way of gambling. If, uh -huh. if they just happen to do it right, like they'll hit it big. And yeah. Like they're just, there's this millionaire and they imagine it some specific way, but uh, we know that chance is like incredibly slim. Like right. Successfully being able to hit, time the market essentially, magically, right. you magically know how to time the market as a brand new person coming in. Like it's, <laughs> it's kind of silly and a little foolish, honestly. But I mean, you know, if you're FOMOing into Messy Puppy, I hope uh, this next chart that we show you is going to help you understand. Uh, why? That's yeah. really silly. <laughs> so the next, the next hot meme coin, I mean, literally there's almost one every other day, like, oh, it's the next hot meme coin. So it pumps and then dumps. And the next hot meme coin, and it literally has a pattern over and over. But let's go back to when this meme coin 
started, when this meme coin craze started, which is about a month and a half, two, three months ago. Let's go take a look at the Pepe price. Now the Pepe was was the hottest one before, right? Mm -hmm. So when, did, how much did it launch there for? What's the price there? Uh, very low. Very low. So it's it, it was a fractions of fractions of fractions, fractions of pennies. Of penny, yeah. The reason why they do that, do you know the reason why they do that? I don't. Because you own a million and you think you're, you, you, you want to go to a If penny. it goes to a dollar, then you're or a billionaire. A penny, easy, a penny, a hundred thousand. Easy, easy. That's what, so if you look at the market, the, the volume there, one, 135, it's just, it's really not much, right? Then you go and you say, okay, first pump went So it literally, it literally quadruples up here. And, and who, who's dumping on you? Well, all these people who bought it here, right? Let's go, let's go all, all chart. There here, we go. here we go. Here's the all chart, right? Yeah, yeah, we're going, we're, we're happy. When I got into it, it was $85 million volume. And guess what? Look at this, 1.5 billion. Wow. 1.8 billion. That's wild. The volume went up eight, what, uh, 3,600 <laughs> times. Okay. It hits the top. When do you FOMO into it? Well, all these early people are talking about it. They're talking about their, their planning on the 17th and the 22nd of April. And then it hits May and they're going, okay, May hits. Suckers go. And they, uh, they let all these influencers start talking about it. Mm -hmm. So then their crowds go and jump in. They go, oh, they start jumping in. They go, oh, it's going down. And then they start talking about it again. And this is what happens with, with retail. They start buying in more and more. And they think it's just going to keep going up. But all the people that bought down here are going, oh, we're out, we're out, we're out, we're out. And then you have, you always have that little pump again. Always a pump going down, thinking it's going to go back up. So people go, I'm going to buy more. It's going to go back up. Did And it just dropped on you again. And it dropped on you again. And it dropped it. And it dropped completely out. And you look at this. This is all done from basically May 1st to May 9th. That's wild. Okay. Now, what's Peppy Coin done? It is yesterday's news. Yeah. Goes sideways to nothing. Okay. So let's go take a look at another one, right? Same thing with Ben. Let's go at the all time right here, right? Ben, the guy, Ben.eth comes out and he, he tells all his, his followers, oh, buy it, buy it, buy it. We're going to pump it. Pumps up. Then it starts to make its way back down. And, he, and of course, they all talk about the promise of it's going to go back of up, course, right? Of course, of course, So this is, and again, this is all May, right? May, starts at May 8th all the way to today, right? He starts giving some of these coins off to who? Influencers. Influencers, including Ben Armstrong. Yep. Right? Specifically, specifically, Ben Armstrong. Ben Armstrong. What happens? Ben goes, I bought, I got free coins. Boom, boom. Oh, yeah. And, and wham, 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 wham. And again, pumps goes down. And, and when it goes here, influencers go, oh, I would be buying. And they go, oh, see, I, see I'm see, i right. I'm yeah. right. And then, and then it goes, and it just does this thing. This is where Ben was telling everyone that, what he received in Bitcoin from Ben Dottie, the guy who actually started pooped it out of the fuck, who pooped it out of his butt in, in midair, right? <gasps> Literally, that's what he did. There's no, there's no utility period behind it. He told on on um, Twitter that whatever coins he received from the original creator of this, he was not going to sell. Guess what he did here? He sold. <laughs> He sold, 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 scam, scammer. Then he comes up and goes, oh, I sold because I wanna, I'm, I'm gonna make this, pro I'm gonna buy this project from the, the creator who didn't get, and now is being sued, by the way, yeah. uh, by the government, yeah. uh, a little class action lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I'm gonna make this a bit, I'm gonna give utility to it, I'm gonna go, and everyone's going, fool, fool, fool. Guys, okay. And then, and then when this, when uh, Ben Dotty starts going sideways, it's going to be, oh, PSYOP, 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 on to the next thing. Right. It was PSYOP, right? That's all it is. It was PSYOP. And then it was, I mean, you, you're you at this point where we don't even know what the next one is because it's going so, so quick, fast. right? So yeah. fast. So that's why a lot of influencers have lost, you know, their credibility is because 
meme coins do not have real utility. That's why they're sitting around. They're they're a meme coin. They're they're fun coin. But always take it as it's fun. If you're going to invest hard earned money and thinking you're getting a return, this is not for it. It's just it's just like saying, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to the, I'm gonna go to the bar and I'm going to take my hard earned money and I'm gonna go drink because when I get done drinking, it's gonna make me smarter and I'm gonna make better investment decisions. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> think about how stupid that sounds, right? Yeah. That's it. That's exactly it. It gets dumped on retail all the time, all the way down. So, all right, guys, Ben.Eth, Eth.Ben, Ben Armstrong, Bend Over, whatever you want to call it. Don't get caught up in it. This is our lesson for today. You guys take care and we're going to give you a lesson for manana. Bye.